Hey everyone, how are you doing? We're gonna do a quick review here of this AgriFab Toe Behind Aerator. I've had this thing for a year, year and a half. When we first moved into this property, you can see how big it is. Uh, I wanted to do some yard work and do some overseeding. And that fall, I paid someone a couple hundred dollars to come out and do the front yard and just a little bit of the back. I think it actually ended up being about $270 for them to do that. And I pretty quickly realized that if I wanted to do any more yard work in this yard and working on the grass and, and do the aerating, you know, every spring and fall, that it's going to be a lot cheaper to buy something that I can tow behind my John Deere than it will be to hire it out. So I got this. When you get this thing, it's going to be in a box and it's going to be all in pieces. So all of these... Uh, tines are going to be loose you have to bolt them up and then assemble everything in here it's not difficult but it does take a good couple hours to get it all done maybe with you know with some power tools of course it'll be a little easier let me flip this over here all right so basically you've got these sections that the tines attach to, and then some spacers that go over the rod, the axle, I guess we'll call it. And then these pieces that attach onto it at the end with the wheels, and you just get them snugged up. So the way this works is this lever here, it kind of catches in this end and when you pull it and release it, it lowers this axle, that lowers the wheels down. And now the tines will poke into the ground. What you're supposed to do is put some cinder blocks. I have some old patio blocks here I'm gonna use. You put them on here and that extra weight will force it into the ground further. And it does a pretty good job of doing a core aeration and with the shape of these tines being a little bit of a of a v you can see they get a little wider well with that shape as it goes into the ground the next time it pushes out the dirt that it had in it from the time before so i'll show you it works pretty good um i did do a couple modifications you see the, this chain i have here the reason for this is when you're transporting it I've noticed that it wants to jump out of there if you go over a big enough bump and then let's say you're gonna take it across the sidewalk you do not want these tines to be touching the sidewalk so when you go over that sidewalk you want to raise it back up and I put this chain on here to hold this here so that it can't, if it jumps out, it won't jump enough that the tines dig in and get dulled hitting the sidewalk. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, I also took a piece of cardboard. It's actually a plastic corrugated type thing. And, um, sorry. I put this on here just to keep it from getting quite extensively scratched up from the cinder blocks that I was using and now the patio blocks so this just sits in well it usually does all right so that just sits in place there like that and this is just something that I can rest the blocks on so it's not actually scratching up the, the metal not that it really matters too badly but you know I like to keep it looking nice so the only real problem with this thing is like I said how the handle wants to jump out from that groove it looks like maybe it's got a little bend in it at this point so maybe i want to bend it back but uh other than that this thing works great let me show you how it goes
All right, so you can see I put the blocks on here. Now, one thing about the blocks you put on, whether they're cinder blocks or blocks like these, a couple things. So you want as many as you need so that the tines under the weight of them will dig into the ground. Now, the more bricks are on there, the more weight that's on there, the further into the ground that'll poke. That's great. A couple things to note though. Um, the wet soil, it'll obviously go in further. But that extra weight also means more work for your tractor. Now this thing is a John Deere L120. It's no heavy duty tractor by any means. It's really just the fancy lawnmower. So you wanna be careful and not overheat that transmission. Um, you cook that fluid in there because you definitely could if you pulled it around for a couple hours with a lot of weight on it um, where it's digging in really good. So you wanna be careful of that. Just be aware of it. Um, you know, maybe don't put quite as much weight if you've got more to do and the ground is wet so it's digging in further. But, uh, you know, I don't have an exact uh, number for that of how much weight for, you know, how wet the soil is. You just have to kind of figure that out. But something to definitely keep in mind because I noticed one day when I was doing it for a little while and it seemed to be struggling just a little but I was pushing it anyway and then I checked that transmission just by hand and it was, it was toasty. So, something to watch for. As you'll see here in just a moment, the tines are digging in pretty good and this particular little section of the yard is already pretty wet. Um, you'll definitely notice if you're doing this when the soil is really dry, the tines don't really poke in very well and, and do a whole lot for you. But at the same time, when it's too wet, you just kind of end up with a big muddy mess because the tines will dig up the soil and, and rip it apart a little more than maybe you want. So. In this case also, I'm going to be going back and forth and then crisscrossing in both directions. And that's because I'm about to overseed. So I'm going to end up with my tires on the tractor and the wheels on this aerator will be pretty muddy by the time I'm done today. If you're liking this video so far, please click the like button. Thanks. Okay, so let me show you what's going on here so you can see how this looks. So here's one of the chunks of dirt that it pulled out. You can see these plugs that it's kicking out. Now we have some sandy soil here. It's like a sandy clay mix. And uh, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to go around and dig this up. I'm going to do some overseeding. But... Uh, like I said, the more weight, the deeper it'll go. And uh, as you make your turns, it does tend to maybe dig up the, the dirt a little and almost turn it over it, uh, as you're going through a turn. These are the plugs I'm getting here. Should be good. So here you can see how muddy the tires got on the tractor and on the actual aerator. And that's from driving over what I already aerated as I crisscrossed my pattern. Not a big deal though with a quick few minutes with a power washer or even just a hose and a scrub brush. Um, I can usually get that aerator clean in just a few minutes, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. I do always use some WD-40 and spray everything down after washing it off. I want to make sure that it doesn't rust up on me. And lastly, I just check and make sure that the tines are still sharp. Maybe hit them with a file if they need it. All right, guys. Well, I hope this helps you out. If you were thinking of getting one of these, now you know a little more about it. Leave a comment and uh, click like and subscribe if you found this helpful at all. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.